Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of uh, Heavy Metallurgy's Album Club. This week, we will be talking about the 1993 bestial black metal classic, Beherit's Drawing Down the Moon. What are we going to say about this? We got some different opinions already brewing in the background. Uh, why don't you guys stick around and find out? Hey, what's going on? Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us on another Wednesday. Jim, TJ, how are we all doing? Hails, yeah, man, doing good. <laughs> what's up, you pukes? <laughs> Gates of Nana Bread, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so awesome. Yeah, um, Jim picked a classic. What some people consider, oh, I mean, a lot yeah. of people actually consider a classic. Um and uh, Kellen will be joining us. He's just running a little late. He worked late tonight, so he'll be popping on here a little bit. Uh, thank you, everybody. Hey, thanks, Chris. It did turn out pretty okay, even though it was a very last-minute thing. Yeah, bring on the nuclear girls. Right on. <laughs> um, yeah, before we get going into it, I'm going to regurgitate some uh, Wikipedia love for everybody here. Uh, Behirat is a Finnish black metal band from Rovaniemi. Yeah. Uh, Someone needs to mute their shit. There you go. Uh, the band was formed in 1989 by Nuclear Holocausto Vengeance, who is also Marco Laiho, Black Jesus, and Sadomatic Slaughter, with the uh, purpose of performing the most primitive, savage, hell-obsessed black metal imaginable. Uh, Beherit is a Syrian word for Satan, though the uncommercial nature... Oh, I'm sorry. Through the uncommercial nature of their music, visuals, and live performances, the band quickly attracted a cult following... Besides the raw sound, the band's music is noted for its avant-garde side and emphasis on atmosphere. Beherit are now regarded as a pioneer in the genre. As a full band, Beherit released one full-length album, which is this one here, and many demos and compilations of raw and minimalistic black metal. They disbanded soon after the release of the experimental 1993 album, Drawing Down the Moon, which is now considered a classic of the genre. Laiho, the group's frontman, continued as a solo project, and released two more albums under the band's name. Uh, we've got this one, H418, whatever. And um, this one, Electric Doom Synthesis. These albums are usually categorized as dark ambient. Although they were completely electronic, the albums carried the atmosphere of the band's black metal recordings. Original members, uh, Nuclear Holocausto and Sadomatic Slaughter, reformed the band in 2008. And released this actually one of the best albums they did actually right here uh engram uh they're now a four piece with uh two new members so there you go there's the uh the history um let's get into first impressions tj we'll start with you you're gonna start with me really yeah. on this i've been hearing <laughs> you gripe about this all week <laughs> now's your time to shine <laughs> well, <laughs> well I'm not going to go into a lengthy disclaimer like I have in previous episodes. Um, I, but I've, as I've said it many times before, this kind of music for me, you know, this black metal, I mean, in black, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't listen to this kind of me. I don't care about it. I did. I remember when this came out, I had actually, I had, uh, was Oath of Black Blood. I bought that. And I, um, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was some kind of stupid joke. I, I couldn't take it seriously. I still don't. I, I mean, now we can get into that a little farther, you know, primitive and think, you know, Hellhammer and all that stuff, notwithstanding, you know, it all has its place and I get that, but it's just with this kind of music and then, you know, I mean, think 91, 92, 93, when this came out, you know, in 93, you know, I'm listening, I mean, the stuff that was out at the time, you know, um, uh, what do we have? Um, Listening to you know Erosion of Sanity by Gore Guts, uh, Nespith by Demlet came out in '93. The Somber Lane came out in '93. You know that's the stuff um, that I was into. And then I hear this, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? I mean, I I could not 
connect with this in, in, by any stretch of the imagination at all. And I still, I'm and kind of, you know, I, I still can't kind of figure out how it is, you know, because you guys were both there at the same time as I was listening to all this stuff. And then this comes out and, and it grabbed a hold of you guys and never let go. And I just can't really fathom that. I don't like, I don't get it, you know, but and so for me, first impressions, you know, I hated it then I still hate it. And I mean, I, and unapologetically, I will admit that in listening to it, I've managed to get through it three times and it's softened a little <laughs> bit for me. <laughs> um, you know, my, the, my, my uh, antagonism towards this, it has kind of, kind of mellowed a, a smidge. Um, but it's still, I, I, you know, I, I was a little bit more vehemently uh, repulsed by it initially. You know, uh, I think my, what I said was uh, un uh, 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 completely unlistenable garbage. I think it's something I might have said at one point. Yeah, this is before you really even listen. You listen to uh, uh, one few two snippets, songs. and then yeah, you're like, you know, is like, oh man, practice. Yeah, like, this is undisciplined <laughs> garbage, and I'm playing. I'm yeah, like, I mean, there's the riffs are super simple. I mean, it's it, not, it, well, yeah, it's not unlistenable. And you know, and I mean, I just, I, you know, my, you know, again, my first impression of this when it, you know, I was there when it happened, and I, uh, <laughs> with the it's amateur, <laughs> right? And I, that's the thing. It's like I just, you hear this in the midst of all the great music that we were consuming at the time, the stuff that was just, I mean, you know, suffocation and stuff that was coming out, you know, um. Breathing the spawn, not breathing the spawn. It was um, what the hell one was it? It was um, I mean, God, I couldn't. Gotten. Yeah, you know, a brutality scream, uh, screams of anguish. I mean, I yeah, breathing the spawn. It was ninety three. Wow. I I didn't stop listening to that for for weeks, you know. And this, I just, you know, but it's like I understand now more, you know. I mean, it's like I get it, you know, like Hellhammer. You you hear you know the, those influences and 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 where that all kind of comes from and all that stuff. But for me, you know, Hellhammer, the connection to Celtic Frost is is well, it is Celtic Frost, undeniable. Yeah, yeah, and and because that has such a, a near and dear place to me, I can connect with it better, and and I like the Hellhammer stuff. Um, but again, you know, with where with this stuff, I just you know the black metal thing started happening, and I just. I didn't get it. And I still, I mean, there, I do more now. I mean, I, I mean, I can't deny, you know, it's had influences on me as a, as a listener and as a player and stuff, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting off the rails a little bit. I mean, first impressions for this is, <laughs> you know, I just, I fuck, I hated this. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I say, I, you know, I didn't come into this wanting to hate it. I hated it when we started it. And as soon as he whipped it out, I'm just like, Oh man. You know? uh, <laughs> um, and, and, and I'm trying, man, I'm trying to be objective as I can, but I also want to be honest because no band, you know, I, no band owns my allegiance. No, you know, that it is what it is. You put this stuff out and people are going to crap on it. Not everybody's going to like it. You know, yep. and oh, it yeah. is what it well, that's is. Part, and, that's and, why we have this discussion. That's what makes and it's, it. And it yeah, right. And then it's not about anybody, you know, there's no accounting for taste. We all like all kinds of things. You know, we all have questionable tastes. Um, and it, it, to some degree or another, that we're all going to disagree with uh, oh, yeah. on one level or another. Um, you know, and this here, this for me is just kind of like, oof, I just, yeah. So first impression sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. <laughs> uh, well, it's my it's my pick. Um, you know, so no surprise. Uh, I really love this album. Um, I don't really remember the first time I heard it. It might be, probably was in your basement along with a lot of other things, Marty. But uh, my first real memory of the record was uh, I was on the way to Fat Camp, and we were bouncing. I was with with Jake. Jake was driving. Jake Moran. And he was just bouncing along the dirt roads and we had this blasting dude. And, you know, if, if anybody knows Jake, you know, Jake's this, you know, usually very quiet, kind of an unassuming guy, but man, when he listens to black metal, it comes out and it is out of, out as we were pulling you know up to the gate, he just screamed werewolf semen and blood. 
<laughs> it was so awesome, dude. Like, I'll never forget it. I'm like, okay. Uh, that, at that moment, I became a Barrett fan. I was just like, I, I, gotta, I gotta get this. Um, so, yeah, yeah. You know, um, definitely super weird from the start, but but there was just always something really intriguing about it. You know, everything about it, just the primitiveness, the the creepy keyboards, the, you know, um, the... This the cosmic cover, you know what I mean? That you know, you know, not the typical metal cover at all. Like you know, um, yep. um, just everything about it. You know, even when the album is silly, and there are silly moments on this album. You know, yep. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it, it's still <laughs> it's still intriguing. Like I just, I, you know, uh, from one song to the next, I'm like, what's going to happen now? And uh, and uh, I really like that about this album. And, and you know, all you know, all these years later, um, since that first real um what it listened whenever that was um you know it, it you know I, I still feel that way going from song to song you know what i mean like like oh yeah what's happening now oh yeah he's gonna say nana it's gonna sound like he's screaming for his grandma over and over again <laughs> <laughs> nana. Nana, nana. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> right. but, but yeah but yeah i liked it from the start i still do right on um my first uh introduction to Beharit was this except on cassette uh, oath of black blood which is basically uh, the story goes they squandered all of the money the label gave them to record their first album on drugs and the label said screw you guys and end up just throwing a couple demos together and calling it their first this is just a collection of demos um and this to me getting this back when it came out in 92 it sounded like utter garbage and i rarely ever listen to this this one i got as a tape trade when uh, i was doing tape trading back in the day because spine farm records back in the day would have been a 20 this would have been a 25 dollar cd to get import so i had a friend uh, dub it for me and i really was attracted to the charm of it I really like the vocal layering on it, you know, ridiculous hissing whispers and uh, <laughs> burping pitch, and farting noises. Yeah, yeah pitch shifted burping <laughs> and farting. And I, I just, it's, it's, it's intriguing in a way. And I really like the way the, the, I like the synth tone. I really like the, it gives it an evil vibe, which 100% what they were going for. Um, listening to it again after not hearing it in a while hasn't held up as good as I remember it. Um, I still enjoyed it. I listened to it way too much this week, which is part of the problem, but um, we'll get into that. But uh, let's talk about, um, uh, Jim prepared a question for us. So while Beharit's raw and simplistic arrangements successfully create the dark atmosphere Marco Laiho was shooting for on this album, it must be asked, do you think, the then 21-year-old Marco and his cohort simply stumbled upon something genre-defining or bestial for bestial black metal, or was there true intent and choice behind their extremely stripped-down approach? TJ. Hmm. Well, you know, I was I've been read that earlier, and I, you know, I think you know when this come out. And there's all these labels out there, you know, this this new black metal, this new sound, and people are starting to catch on to it. And I think all these these labels are looking for stuff and looking for things. And I think these kids just had <laughs> called, <laughs> called, <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, I'm sorry. Um Silly. you know, I I think um they were just in the right place at the right time and they were doing something. And they saw it, and it's like, oh, this is just crazy and and grim enough, and we're gonna put this out. We're gonna put this out, and we're gonna stack it up against this other stuff that's going on. Um, you know, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it just, I just think it was timing more than anything, uh, because of what they're doing is so just kind of, it's so purely primitive and, and juvenile, and you know utterly stripped down on purpose you know i think i mean they obviously achieved their goals on you know they did i mean the, the the record is definitely dark definitely dreary uh they're, they're trying to invoke all these kind of 
you know, I mean, personally, I mean, I listen to this and I'm like, dude, Satan hates this record, man. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's like you want, you want, you want, you want, you want what, you know, buy more uh, Shania Twain or something. That's what Satan likes. That shit, <laughs> that, that, that shit turns more people to the devil every day. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, um, you know, it, but I just, you know, because there's so many other bands that are like that sound like that now and. I think a lot of it was just timing and where they were and, and they, and, you know, I mean, and they, they weren't very prolific. They just kind of did a couple things and, um, and that was it. So it's like, I don't, you know, I don't know, you know, in today's day and age and stuff, it's just, I don't know. Right on Jim. How about you? Well, I'll, since you asked the question, I'll let you go last. I'll, I'll, I, I honestly, th the fact that you found out that, uh, Laiho was 21 when this album was made really surprised me because listening to it now, it sounds like music written by kids. It just does. It sounds like, uh, I mean, a lot of these riffs, I probably accidentally written the first month of playing guitar when I was a kid, a teenager. I didn't keep them because they were too boring. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm not going to sit here and say that it's bad. I'm just going to say that, you know, if they were wanting to be simplistic mission accomplished what what really did surprise me listening to it not having spun it in a long time is how kind of experimental it is for 93 they're doing some stuff on here that no one else was really doing i mean all the layered vocals it's kind of carcassy that's before carcass though i think um the keyboard stuff there's a lot of even though the album overall has a very lethargic crawl to it, I think that um, I like the synth work. I like there's like some uh, ambient tracks that kind of tie the, the metal tracks together, which is kind of interesting, makes it cool. For me, though, it's the vocals. I mean, they make me smile. Oh, look at this guy creeping in here, the, the metal creeping in together. a creeping you want to mute your YouTube there. He did right. Now. Hey, Kellen. What's up? that's up um but for me it was it premeditated i mean if you read the wikipedia thing it kind of sounds like that was their intention but um i think it's interesting to kind of look at what was happening around them at the time um about the same year is this the same year i think so 93 this classic first impaled nazarene total corn nors 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 um this is kind of on the same wavelength as uh Bathory, but I think this came out a few years after, but they started around the same time. Barathrum, Hailstorm, their debut. Uh here's another Finnish band. These guys were more death metal minded, but Belial. All these albums, and then you look at what else was going on on a wider scope. This came out, this might have came out the year after drawing down the moon, actually. But you want this is probably one of the most evil records I've heard that in the the heavy in the in the more heavy sphere other than you know merciful fate this album is just creepy and dark and evil sounding it kind of puts beherit on their heels a bit because what they're doing it sounds like high school kids just learning their instruments but the the orchestration of it the the vocal layering and the experimentation it I just it's it that question stymies me i don't it's hard for us to be in the in the artist's brain for all of this you know they just they just you listen to this record and you listen to the demos before it just sound like they were the kids that would always come to the party do too many drugs and pass out or puke all over the floor that's just kind of what i get when i hear Bathory or Beharit. and um yeah i don't know if i answered the question but i'm gonna let jim answer it and then we're gonna get kellen caught up here as well <clears throat> Yeah, so, you know, it's it's something I think about every time I listen to this record. You know, like, you know, uh, first of all, it's eminently successful for me. Like, you know, it's it's very dark. It's uh, um, very different and weird. Um, uh, it's, it's hard to categorize, uh, except for Best Joke About Black Metal, which, it you know, it helped really solidify, I think, um, the sort of the tenets of the genre. But at the same time, I'm like, man, that's a super simple riff or man, that that's really just one note he's playing on that synth. And, and, uh, so, you know, part of me, like, it's always wondering, it's like, you know, especially when you see pictures of Behera, just like you said, uh, Marty, I was actually surprised. I thought they were just teenagers too, when they did yeah. this. And I, I know they were teenagers for Oath of Black Blood. Oh yeah. But, you know, but, um, 
Margo was born in 72, in June of 72. So he's, he's 50 now, which would put him at 21 in November 93 when this came out. So um, he was a little older. <clears throat> but so when, when I saw that, you know, when I saw the age thing, it made me kind of think that, hey, maybe it was more of a conscious choice. You know what I mean? Um, if if they logic. had actually, you know, if they had, you know, been teenagers, if he really was like, you know, sub 20, you know, I, I think it would have been they stumbled upon something amazing. You know, they had they had their influences that can only, you know, pull them off to a certain extent and then created something amazing. You know, and, and that's kind of like Hellhammer story, because, you know, like, you know, you know. <clears throat> Tom Warrior would be the first to say when he was young, you know, he couldn't play the Venom stuff, so he just played what he could, and he came up with something really unique, you know. Um, and I wouldn't change a thing about it, and most people wouldn't, but but that was kind of the story. And uh, and I would think that Beharitz was kind of the same, but you know, I I think it was that was true on Oath of Black Blood. You know, they they're probably listening to Blasphemy or whatever, and um, Sarcophago and things like that. Yep. And just said, okay, hey, you know, we're we're gonna be as raw as we can and blah, blah, blah. But then a couple years go by a couple, three years. And then he's had time to develop, you know? And, and I think he wasn't a hundred percent focused on, you know, being a awesome guitar player, but he was focused on creating mood and atmosphere. So he was exploring elect electronics, as we all know, he was really, really exploring the occult and, you know, and, and he really had a vision, you know, with, with, you know, basically, you know, you know the whole band breaking up and him forming them again and then going back in the studio they're not having enough money to mix and then you know just like story, all kinds of stuff happening there but it finally came together so i i do think that um and this is a recent development of mine is is that yeah you know that there was a lot of intent in here um um execution wise you know um <laughs> i'm not sure it, it, it was you know 100 percent you know what was in his head you know, made it out, and and actually, I'm kind of pretty sure it wasn't since he went fully electronic later. But at at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, I, I think it was a lot closer to what it was in his head than it, I may have at first realized. You know, and at, at first I thought I was like, ah, you know, they they kind of just tripped into this, and it just ended up sounding awesome. You know, um, but uh, but I, I do think that there, it you know, was some intent there, and I think that maybe it's because of that reason you know, that it wasn't accidental, if we, if you will, that it's had that staying power for, for all this time. It has certainly influenced the legion of uh, bestial black metal stuff. Kellen, how are you, my friend? Doing all right. Sorry for coming in late like this. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, let's, did you catch the question? Do you want to answer that and then talk about your first Sure, sure. Question? So I was, I had you, uh, as I was driving in from work, I had the, everything playing. So I, I've been listening to everyone. Um, yeah, so I guess, I'll, I'll try and like uh, streamline the in the first impression question into the um, gym question. Uh, this record, I remember listening to it when I was first trying to get into black metal generally. And it was e as weird as for me, it was like 20 years ago as it was this time going back and listening to it. It is super uh, strange. Um, I'm glad I think Jim mentioned the, the album artwork. That threw me, right? Yeah, like there's like the whole concept of um, like the gaze and artwork, like who is the who's looking, and so often you're looking from a vantage point on Earth up at the moon, right? There's like a, a wolf or a Dracula or a something like in the background, right? Mm -hmm. And here, like I'm an alien from the moon looking at, out into space and it's a black metal record. Like I was just so thrown as to what I was going <laughs> to get. <laughs> um, I, I just had totally uh, no. And then you press play and oh my God. It, it, anyway, it, the, I guess what I would go back and I, what I thought a lot about during this week was when you were first getting into the genre and I came later than everyone here, but um you know, I had the same sort of idea of like becoming somewhat familiar with what made up the genre. And then a band that was formative, like the first time listening to Over is Not in Madrigal, I was just like, what happened? Like, it just completely threw me. And there was this unique time period when you're getting into a genre and you realize how 
sort of unique and subversive black metal was in those early 90s, like just completely um, through like the perceptions. And I know DJ was like, this sucks then, it sucks now, it's always going to suck. <laughs> <I hate this." laughs> but I, I, I think it's to, to, to some degree like completely founded um, because – it challenged so what of my so many of my perceptions of what metal generally should sound like, right? Like everything. Or we're as we get into songwriting and production. Oh my god! When we get to that one, I'm sure we'll have a good time. But like the <laughs> this record just and uh, many I like it at that time period felt like they were trying to deliberately not just thematically be transgressive, but sonically in a way that had not been touched, or we're trying to rediscover that. Um. To the question surrounding whether it was intentional, um, especially given the age of the artists involved, I think it's a record that's a good example of the artists understanding what they don't want to sound like, but having very little sort of understanding of what it needs to, like what their end goal is supposed to be. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's you're like nice. they yeah. understand yeah. what they're pushing against and what they don't want to be but they're sort of grasping into some unknown territory as to what they need to land at. Um, so there's, there's this weird sense of like ambient sci-fi thing that they also want to hold true to. They want to do primitive black metal in a way that's probably unlike what many of their peers are like uh, uh, what at this point in 93, what black metal is still least, you know, we're almost on the precipice of 94. Right. So, the next year, the releases that we get are, you know, worlds of advanced by comparison to this. Yeah. Um, it, it, and I think that's one of those things where, like, they understood where the momentum was going in the genre and they wanted to push back against any kind of um, sort of sounding like anyone else out there. And they achieved that. But there's a certain kind of, like, like I don't even – to say – to me, it feels – Del I don't know if it's whether it's deliberately amateurish or you know a consequence of their age, but it just feels at some degree like lost and enjoying <laughs> the journey. Um, yeah. so I, I, they're, always, they're always falling a little bit off the cliff on every song. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's always a little off the rails. <laughs> right. Like I mean, in the sense that uh, if you ask someone who didn't know how to, you know, I, I don't know if it's to me, it feels like they don't know what they're doing at times. Right. Like, um, and I guess that's what I, they, they understand what they absolutely don't want to sound like. Um, but as to what Behar is now and where they're going, right. They kind of, they kind of die after this record in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, um, I guess that's kind of what, what I think about when I listen to this is it's more of a, a, a record that is running away from convention, but doesn't really understand what it's creating simultaneously. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, good good point. I mean, there is a feeling of wanting to do something different, which they have done, but there, that's why I keep thinking when I heard that Holocausto was 21 when this record was written, it, it sounds like a 15 or 6. I mean, it, uh, and the Night Side Eclipse was written by 16-year-olds. Let's put that into context. That is a very infinitely layered humongous but, symphonic yeah but he, he <laughs> is a singular talent though well yeah. but yeah and then yeah. again too it, it's again it's kind of an apples and oranges comparison because you you know behare it is the sum of its parts it is i you know, i believe it's, it's you know i mean i every piece of that of this record is intentional i don't think there's it and and like callan was saying and i think that's pretty accurate because it it, it, team, it seems to be kind of the standard mentality for these these black metal bands coming in it's like we don't want to be you know yeah, whatever yeah. you know and so we're going to be this and in order for us to be the opposite we've got to you know be primitive and sound you know the you know record everything in the woods and sound you know use crap and sound like shit and whatever <laughs> and <laughs> and you know and and I and it went and you you can't deny that they achieved that with this and and I have to, as a caveat to my opinion, because I you know some uh, was it um who said it here? Uh, oh, who was it said it? Somebody I can't I forget who said it, but he says uh, 
there's no portal without Beherit. And and I I I have I will have to reiterate, it's like I completely appreciate you know the the impact that these bands have had on the scene and on metal as a whole. I am not in any way trying to be, you know, generally dismissive of, you know, regardless of whether I like it, you know, I, I still can see that. And, and I, and I do respect that in, in those terms because you can't question, you know, you come to today and you, you, you can see it all over all kinds of stuff, you know, the blackened influence that's come all over and, and even calling this band, you know, black metal, it's like, you know, the bestial war metal thing, I think fits better. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's definitely, they, it's like an interloper. There's black metal, yeah, you can go war metal, I mean, it's, go black it's, metal, it's kind of in the middle. Right, I mean, it's it's definitely, is like, is it black metal in its execution, or is it black metal in its, you know, in its, in its entire, you know, so it's like, I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely black and metal it's definitely lives in that camp but it's not you know you know it's not dark throne it's not it, it's it's something it's, it's it's its own thing for sure but i just want to make you know i just want you know it's like i want to to add that little addendum to to all my bullshit ramblings that it's like you know i can't stand it but i still i understand where it stands in the in the pantheon you said throw a you know a nickel word in there of 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 metal and um <laughs> and 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 it does it and, and it's important um you know and there's a lot of things that you know were inspired by this and brought around because of this and and I do get that but at the same time I just utterly can't stand this so you know but I just wanted to throw that out there for everybody who might have a, a wrong impression of what I'm trying to say <laughs> right on so <laughs> Well, let's uh, discuss the musicality and composition of Drawing Down the Moon. Uh, let's. TJ, <laughs> since you're so <laughs> eager, let's, let's discuss. Oh, yes, I'm so <laughs> eager. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, I, I, I was at least they're trying to, to, to create songs on this. I give them credit for that. Um, but as far as musicality, it's like, yeah, he may have been 21 when he was writing this stuff, but I get the sense that Somewhere around the age of 14, he just didn't practice anymore. He just kind of like he picked up the pipe and <laughs> put down his guitar and then just decided he was going to do this dark and brooding, you know, devil music that he does. And um, they did as a band. And I don't really think he was putting any thought into any of that as far as that goes. So musicality, it's like, you know, but again, to Jim's question, and I believe that everything that they did on here was intentional. I think they achieved what they were trying to do. They wanted it to be stripped down and bare, dark and primitive, and you know, and all that stuff. And I think, you know, I think the the record is very effective in bringing that across. You know, um, you know, um, in you know, too, it's like at least other bands that were similar to this or, or influenced by this, at least they tried to progress beyond this. You know. Um, this just, I don't know, it's, it, it is kind of weird and all over the place at times, but the, at the same time, there is, there is, there is kind of a focus to it. So I don't know, man, it's just, it, again, it's, it sounds like the fumblings of a bunch of 15 year old kids to me. I mean, it, I listened to this and it reminds, like Marty said, you know, it reminds me of stuff I wrote when I was a kid and I just wince, you know, I just like, ugh, you know, like, wow, because it's just it's so just juvenile and um, it's just really hard for me to, 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 to get a hold of it and really care about it at all. Um, so yeah, that's my take on that. So. <laughs> all right. On. Uh, Jim <laughs> musicality and composition. Uh, so composition, I rank really high, you know, and <laughs> speaking of high, I, think marco was super high when he was coming up on this yeah. <laughs> to come up with this stuff you know uh whatever he was taking at the time uh you know it was definitely uh, on the the more evil end of the drug spectrum from what i hear um i think that uh those evil choices resulted in some evil sounds and some bizarre choices you know i mean the whole cosmic aesthetic that we've related to i mean you know there's the the cosmic black metal thing is, is has been around for a long time but 
I don't know pre-93 that it was a thing. You know what I mean? I, I definitely think that if he wasn't the first, he would, you know, uh, that if Baharin in general wasn't the first, and they were definitely one of the first to sort of meld those two worlds, you know, to Kellen's point, satanic, you know, moon, moon and nights, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know uh, making their scene uh, uh, from a couple hundred thousand miles away. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, so composition, you know, you know, with, 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 with the sense, with the whispers and the, the, you know, you know, computerized layering over the voices, you know, the, 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 the slow down tape of the voices, you know, all those different like vocal experiments that they did, you know, Very even, cool. you know, uh, even down to like, you know, the Finnish pronunciation of English, which makes things sound even crazier and, <laughs> And uh, and not realizing that saying Nana in English sounds really funny <laughs> in a black metal song, <laughs> especially over and over again, like he does. Yeah. But all those all those things I think can combine to make this you know something really special, really hard to define. And you know, I mean, it just it just, you know it's so weird. You know, it doesn't get old. You know, even though it's it's weird, um, it isn't like you know weird uh, in such a way where it's like annoying to listen to i mean you know there are some annoying bits you know again i'll say the nana thing but um but for the most part there's a consistency throughout each song there there, there there's a linking like you know darkness there's linking aesthetic you know um and and it, every song sort of makes sense in context of the album as a whole so compositionally you know i, I you know I, I think it's i rate it really high now mus musically if we just take a step back and we say hey you know you know what are those riffs like in there? I mean, and they are bone, bone, bone simple. You know what I mean? And I think someone said in the comments, and I think they had it right on, like, you know, you know, just black metal in general this time, there was more of the punk aesthetic. And, and so, you know, and you know, really what he's doing. Yeah. The guitars are, are down tuned, you know, the lower end of the guitars and the bass are, you know, way up in the mix, but the riffs themselves are open chords, man. You know, just like punk, you know what I mean? You know, there's, there's no palm muting to, to speak of on this. I mean, it's all open chords and, you know, just like punk, you know what I mean? And so even though it's doomy, super slow, a lot of the times when you, yeah, it's fast sometimes, but mainly it, it's more of a, a moodier, slower album, you know, those riffs have their root more. And I think a, a punk aesthetic, you know, in their execution, it's, it's a metal aesthetic. But in, you know, from just a technical perspective, the way that, you know, they are, you know, con you know played is in a very punk kind of style. So um, very simple, you know, mus musicality, you know, a lot of the sense that I love on this record, you know, when you go back and you really pay attention, it's, it's one only note. like one or two notes, one, one note or maybe two, you know, oh, I'm going to I'm going to go, you know, you know, a step down here. You know, it's you holding know, one and, and, note over a random key that doesn't fit with that. It's just like, yeah, 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 oh, exactly. Whatever. Um, yeah. It's evil. Just do yeah. it. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, yeah. It just, you know, it, it just somehow works anyway. So, um, but, but yeah, I, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, um, you know, musicality, you know, Maybe, you know, not so great on that. You know, I mean, if we're talking, you know, just just pure, you know, like, you know, I hate to use the word talent because I really think that attitude is, is the most important thing in, in, in extreme music. And I think the attitude is all there, you know. So but, but I, even though I, I rank the, the, you know, the musicality much lower than the composition, I think that the musicality is just not very relevant, you know, in, 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 con in connection with like what this album's like intent is you know and what they're trying to put across which was you know to kellen's point you know and to some other guys in the chat i agree it, it was just a complete reaction to what was going on e even really to, to to most of the you know, the sounds of coming out of norway i mean it wasn't cold and fast and icy it was down tuned and dark and and thick and, and <laughs> you know it was it was in your face you know it was uh you know um you know, all the levels up to the point where things are distorting, you know, I mean, on purpose, you know, so, and I think that, you know, you know if, if they wanted something reactionary, they completely succeeded because it still sounds fresh today, man. I mean, what sounds like this record, you know, I mean, I mean, there's, there are some bands, you know, that, that took that and, and, you know, um, I know Archgo was around around the same time, you know, but like, you know, now Archgo, they did a split together like, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and now Archgo's experiment with like, you know, synths and stuff, simple synths and stuff like that. But like, you know, um, 
you know, there's even a, a couple albums back where they, where they go, hail Satan, hail Lucifer, you know, <laughs> and I, I love that part and that song. But when I listen to Old Beherit, I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, they did that on Solomon's Gate 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. The exact same thing, you know what I mean? Yep. So anyway, but yeah, so that's 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 my take on a musicality and composition for these guys. How about you, Kellen? So this is a great example, in my opinion, of a record that doesn't check any of your traditional boxes when it comes to musicality and composition, yet like keeps pulling you back. Meaning like if, if you were to just in the, have like clear definitions in terms of to the uh, talented and interested in songwriting, you know, uh, ability to perform their individual instrument to at a high degree. Like understanding song dynamics and structure. Like if you were to if you were to put a list together on like that would make up, you know, what I think we're typically up against when we talk about musicality and composition, it it would not check any of those boxes. True. Like, but at the same time, if it is completely unique and in a lot of ways, when I like I remembered this, the impact that this record had on me. Right? Like I can't say that about a, most records that are, you know, don't check any single box under musicality and composition. Like it made such a sort of uh, impact or impression upon me when I first listened to it. You know, even though I may not return to it on a consistent basis, I remember how visceral that initial impression was. Um, and I think that that's a, speaks to the strength of it. Um, so in a lot of ways, music and cali- musicality and composition don't work in its favor. Um, but uh, I, I think that should, that would not, I don't want to dissuade anyone by diminishing how poorly some of the, you know, elements are executed here. Um, because I think to, to sort of, um, pull off of, uh, Jim's point, like, um, I don't think like, I, I, this is all fresh in my head. I, cause I've just recently did a, um, sort of. Black Death bestial uh, review for the this channel will be coming here in the in the future. So I've been listening to a lot of this kind of music, and at this point in time, it's pretty well codified. So you kind of know within the margins what it's going to sound like, for better or worse. And I've been listening a lot to that kind of music, not just a single band, but bands within the genre. Um, this sounds still totally. To you know, pardon the the pun, alien relative to to many of the you know peers, it, it is still like a, an odd listen, and I think that's the strength of its musicality and personality. So, um, I, I that's 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 kind of the, the thought I would want to leave with is like, it's a totally unique listen, and uh, I I guess the the last closing point I would add there is, um, I don't think of it as a riff album. Um, or uh, even like a drum album, right? Like it is for for me, first and foremost, it is a strange vocal atmospheric record. Um, I guess that's, that's what I get from it. And in some ways, I think people have talked about to really call it a black metal listen or even a bestial black metal listen is kind of a, you know, strange term sometimes for this one. Um but it influenced all that stuff. Oh, well, for sure. For sure. Like it, it was, but it's like at the same time, it's like a glancing point, right? It's, it's establishes something as in, as soon as it gets there, it kind of departs into a different world. <laughs> and yeah. like the, so many bands took elements of this and tried to bring it into, you know, a, a, I think a well-established, you know, Archcode, they've got EPs, I think, coming around at this time period. But like, mm-hmm. I think that band, like Archcode, if you're looking for a finished bestial black metal band, is probably a better example yeah. in terms of what people have followed. Um, yeah. Whereas like this for record, sure. like I, I don't even know where to point you after it. You know, in no. terms of what what's the end sound like? So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, for me, I mean. Kellen really summed it up very nicely on there, but you know, looking at the musicality of this, the riffs are super simple. Like, you know, we've all established super simple and they're so simple. They're earworms. It's a hook. Each song has its own hook, super simple power chord, 
three notes in a progressive way. I don't know. It's just where they lose me, you know, listening to it now, having some songwriting um, experience over the years, they'll stick with this hook, one hook per song. When they go to change the song, this is where they don't know how to songwrite. They don't know what key. They don't know how it, nothing flows into it. They stop and some little element will come in and then the song will shift off in a completely different unrelated direction. It's just like, oh, okay. All right. So you don't know what you're doing. That's fine. But I mean, it always reverts back to that main hook and the, and the composition is where the album really kind of shines. It's, it's bizarre. It's weird. I mean, the fins are always, I'm one of them. <laughs> they're, they're just strange. And, it seems like he probably realized that there were a lot of holes in this music. So they fill it up with all these vocal layers ranging from the whispers to the screams, to the, the pitch shifted lows to the, you know, the computerized effects, um, the addition of the synths, which I love the synth tone on this entire album. Very cool. But just holding one note over, you know, a progressive sounding or, a, a a, a chord progression that the, the, the keys don't match up. It's just like, there's not a lot of there's, there's intent, but there's not a lot of uh, effective songwriting execution or even consideration of theory, which I mean, music theory, if it sounds good to you and it works by ear, typically that means it's in some sort of theory in my, my head. Anyway, I don't know theory either, but usually if you play something and it sounds wrong, then it's probably not. <laughs> it's probably not uh uh in cahoots with theory but um but still one thing that pulls this record through for me and you know in, in spite of all of its flaws it's groundbreaking in a lot of ways that has really kind of stood the test of time it's lays heavy on charm and that goes a long way with me especially on something like this uh let's talk about the uh production tj yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what so we're, production? you know, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. What production? Um, you know, <laughs> look, man. You know, it, it, you know it. You know the 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 boomy drums and the PV backstage plus guitar tone, and it, it gets mushy, and then the. The, you know the, the the vocal stuff just you know is all over the place i just you know what they you know i don't know you know it is what it is man it, this this album is the sum of its parts and i you know what what i it's really hard for me to be real super objective about what this is because there 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 is no like i can't look at this and break it down and get all kind of philosophical about you know, oh, you know, they're they're doing all these deep things and all this groundbreaking <laughs> stuff. It's like, it's like, it's like they're, you know, they're they were young guys. You know, we got. To, I want to be evil, and to be evil, my guitar amp must be broken. And so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, you know, and then so it's, you know, and it, it is what it is. That you know, they completely achieve what they've done with it, and. A lot of the, you know, a lot of these, you know, like what Kellen say and stuff. I mean, I agree with you guys 100% on a lot of this stuff with these, with this band, with this record. You know, it, um, they, you know, they were doing their own thing. They were, you know, tr trotting upon ground that had not been, you know, touched in, in many ways, you know, and setting a formula for many other bands to come after. And that's absolutely true. And, you know, the production is just, a, it, it is just absolutely indicative of what they were trying to do. And, you know, my opinion is terrible. I hate it. I, I just can't even, I can't, I'm listening to stuff like suffocation and, and things in 93. And then there's this. And, and I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me, right? I mean, this can't be for real. And I, I can't, it, you know, I just, I can't ever get there. I appreciate the stripped down nature of things. I like a lot of things that are simple. There's all kinds of stuff that, that, that smacks of this kind of, 
you know, bizarreness that I, I mean, like I love portal, you know, and, and, you know, why do you love that? And you don't like this, but you like that. Well, whatever, man, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, okay. And there's no accounting for taste, but yeah, I mean, production on this is just, I mean, you can, you know, the stuff is there and you can hear it, which is really cool for this, for a lot of this stuff, things like this, they, you know, it's like, they just kind of just everything goes into mush and it's just all crap. And it's just all, you know, screeching guitar and, you know, some guy in the background screaming away about Satan's mom or whatever. And it's just, you know, it, whatever. So at least for that, because it's not, you know, this is where it, it kind of deviates from black metal, where the black metal stuff is so much more cold and, 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 and dissonant than this, where this is, is very much has more warmth to it and fullness to it. The keyboards bring a lot of that in. Um, you know, the drum production and all that, the bass is very evident on this. So they're, you know, they were definitely, you know, not charting the same trajectory as like Dark Throne again. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Personally, I just think, I think it's awful, but, you know, they, they got their point across with it. So it works for them, you know, cool. <laughs> Kellen. <clears throat> The production on this record makes me feel like with, to go back to Jim's question regarding like, did they stumble upon this or not? The production makes me feel like they 100. Like if you were to ask me, could you replicate this? Like, could you, is this like a sound that you could go back <laughs> to the studio and say like, we need to go back and find that drawing down the moon sound. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I think it's not. Like, I don't think you could do it. I think it's, whether you want to call it absolutely terrible or bad or lo-fi is maybe the nice way to phrase it. Like there's something completely like in a, like lightning in a bottle about this production. Like I, I just don't think you can recapture it and listening to it this past. I mean, just how front and center and overbearing the vocals are. Right. Like I, I just too loud in the mix, but still it, it, it's kind of works, you know, right. Like it completely adds to the personality and like disorientation and like, what the hell am I listening to kind of factor? Um, yeah, I, I just, it's, there's so many things to, to be like critical and like wrong that that's the first thing. Like this sounds terrible, but I, I guess what I can't take back is the year, you know, the early part of my like twenties when I was getting into black metal and listening to this record and just being like kind of caught off guard and amazed. And I just, that I, I once again, to kind of reiterate what I've already made, got across is like, it's part of what is fascinating me about this release for so long. So um, I, I, I don't, it's a terribly produced, um, but at the same time, like I wouldn't have it any other way. So I, I guess that, that's kind of how I, I come down on this record when it comes to production. All right, Jim. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, um, echo um, Kellen's sentiments here. Um, yeah, it's, you know, you know, you know, taken, you know, objectively <laughs> the production is, is, is pretty rough. Um, I, I'll be kind. Uh, um you know, the, the vocals are way, way too high in the mix. Um, the guitars are way too, you know, pushed down. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, you kind of have to work to hear the riffs below the vocals a lot of the times, especially on the, the choruses. We'll just call them that with, uh, you know, the old, whatever those are. <clears throat> um, uh, but, uh, but, you know, but, you know, listening to it, you know, over and over, you can start piecing everything out. And, you know, so it, it'd be... It takes a little bit of effort there, except where I think the keys are kind of perfectly balanced, you know, and, and, you know, where they're at in the mix really, you know, creates that, that aura, you know, that you, that you want when you put on this record, you know, you want, you want, you, you know, you're going to get darkness and, and doominess with, with occasional bursts of speed and total weirdness. And the keys are, are kind of the glue that kind of brings all those <laughs> instruments together. <laughs> Everything about this is great. Hate <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, but but I, I I will say you know um you know I mean there's there's no two ways about it you know um you know intentional not intentional whatever 
you know, I mean, a, a lot of black metal, we all know, of course, you know, they, they you know, artists were making the choice to be, have intentionally bad production, you know, to, to make you work for it, you know, in terms of your enjoyment of the album, you know, going against, you know, clean production, going against all that stuff that was going on with a lot of death metal at the time. Uh, you know, whatever the reasons are, you know, it, it is objectively, you know, that that's the one thing I'll ding about this album is, is the production is, um, you know, and, but it does make it what it is, you know, uh, you know, would, you know, would we still be talking about it if, you know, as much as we are, if it's, if it, if it had more of a standard production, if, if the levels were, we thought if, if the riffs were where they were or where we thought they were, or if the vocals, well, they're strangers, if, if they were buried below the guitars, would they have such a, an impact and an overall contribution to the, to the, 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 frankly, just pure oddness of the record? You know, maybe not, you know, it, it may, it may have really like changed the impact of the album if it had more of a, of a kind of standard production. So as much as like, you know, the one thing like I, said, I keep going back to is, is the vocals definitely too high. I, I wish I could change that, you know, if, but if you, you said, okay, Jim, we're going to change it. I, I, I like Kellen, I would say no, because I, I do think um, any sort of change, even though objectively speaking, you know, it's a quote unquote bad production. It's part of what makes the album what it is and, and you know, and, and gives it, you know, that, that sort of strange, enduring quality that's had it stand the test of time. So you can't really separate the two. You know, the, the production, you know, works for this record, helps make the record. So, you know, it kind of has to stay with it, you know. Right on. And, you know, people have been saying it in the chat, and I was going to say it as well. After hearing this, which is obviously just a couple demos strung together, it makes this sound like Bob Rock produced it. Let's be honest. It does. <laughs> and I would say the production of this is is just kind of become like the fourth member of the band on this record. It's just the way this record sounds, and it works perfectly for this record. It it. As I was listening to it, I listened to this album probably 10 times this week, which was too much. It was too much. I just wanted to keep listening to it, see if there was something else I was going to get out of it. and <laughs> I didn't really get there, but I mean, I like the fact that the vocals are higher in the mix. That that tells me there's a an aura of confidence about what they were doing vocally. Um, musically, when this album is going slow, which is a very good portion of this record, like I stated, it's a very lethargic record. It sounds like on the slow parts, it sounds like a drum machine to me. It just does. It sounds like the production is a little bit better. Um, when it kicks in faster, that's when everything sounds a little bit farty. The drums, you could tell it sounds like a real drummer at that point. It sounds like a real kick. It's just a very plunky, farty sounding uh, kit. That is when the album gets poorly. The, the mix really suffers is when they're playing fast. It gets, if things get a little mushy, but you know, you know, gates of Nana, you know, uh, Solomon's gate, the slower riff with the very distinct riff and the drum machine sound. If it's not a drum machine, I'm surprised, but I'm, I'm going to say drum machine because that's what it sounds like to me. It, it seems like the the production isn't as bad as you guys make it out. It's, you can hear everything. It's just, I said it, that. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of when it gets things get fast and they they switch to real drums, but it's still it, again it all works and it acts like the fourth member. It, it makes this album what it is. I like the lopsided vibe of it. I guess um, again, it boils down to charm. If you're going to start grading it on production marks and songwriting, uh, it's going to be an F all day. It just is. But yeah. I mean. The, the 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 bottom line is even though these riffs are like someone with mittens wrote them they used mittens to play guitar you can still hit a <laughs> i think you could probably still play a power chord with like an oven mitt on you could probably get it it's catchy man it's just so stupidly catchy i mean i've i've got one of the songs in my head i've had it in my head all day it's it's ridiculous and that's a sign of a riff that sticks whether good or bad um favorite least favorite songs jim uh man i gotta go favorite is satomatic rights man i love that song dude everything about it I, the riffs are great i love the tempo the keyboards are awesome on it you know they really create a great mood 
And then, you know, about a minute and a half into the song, there's those like, like pure black metal triads, you know, definitely kind of reminiscent of Burzum a little bit right there. Um, uh, I mean, it's, I think everything about this song sort of encompasses like what to me is great about Beharit. Like that, that song is, you know, like to me, a great representation of the record. Um, you know, uh, you know, everything is, you know, like really works for me. I, you know, I, the intro, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, s- you know, giving a statement here. Like it's all cosmic sounding at first. And then there's like the satanic diatribe, you know, <laughs> and uh, the goes, which goes into Solomon's gate, which, which is just a crusher. It's a great crushing song, a great way to, um, you know, have it going, uh, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I got to call it also nuclear girl, man. It's, it's a really cool instrumental, man. And just like the title is so weird, you know, like, nuclear girl like what the hell does that have to do with anything you know what i mean like like that was definitely you know cocaine inspired or heroin or something like something went on there and just said, i'm gonna call this one nuclear girl you know what i mean um but but i i, I just i really like the sense there um and uh it, it it's a kind of a joy when that song comes on especially after the semi train wreck that is the gate of nana <laughs> i love that man that's so quirky now, now, i love it now I I do I I love the music on Gator Nana man, but just like I I tell you every time he goes Nana, I mean I <laughs> I I laugh every time man. I I I, I cannot listen to that song without at least chuckling when, you, when I have headphones on, and you know because it is like unintentionally goofy. I mean you know it's a complete you know lack of realization of like. In you know in America we always think of our grandma when somebody says that. So I'm like I've never heard someone like. You know, mention a kind old grandma in a really satanic way until I heard this record. You know, na 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 You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I guess. Hey, well, bring it back. We got we got King Diamond. You know, going grandma and shit. But that's completely different. You know, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, so but I still like it, even though it's super uneven for that reason. Um, uh, down there is awesome uh you know summerland the flutes in summerland i mean come on flutes <laughs> i mean probably synth flutes but still flutes nonetheless i love the synths in, in summerlands and uh and you know and who doesn't love a song it's called werewolf semen and blood you know, i already mentioned that earlier i mean come on it's perfect you know yeah, i mean this, this this song is uh it's i mean you know that song just you know really contributes to the power of the album, it's a crusher too. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, you know, really all in all, I mean, you know, the, the album works, I, you know, um, just, you know, kind of front to back, um, even though it's, it's, you know, kind of slow moving most of the time with its tempos, you know, I mean, I, I think that the songs are short enough where the doomy elements don't kind of extend out, you know, you know, too long where you're just like getting bored or whatever, you know, <clears throat> On Un- Holy Pagan Fire, I-, I think could have used a little more synth. There's a little less atmosphere on that one, <clears throat> um, but it's still a really cool song, and the guy has a great doomy tempo. So um, yeah, so for me again, uh, you know, Satanic Rites, um, you know, Solomon's Gate, um, Nuclear Girl, and uh, you know, all those are, are fantastic. And and uh, if-, if-, if even if you would just pronounce Nana a little different, like Nana or Nana, I mean something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have uh, helped that song a little for me, but um, yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, yes, yeah. I I knew. Uh, yeah, some of the comments was like, "Hey, dude, it's a it's a it's a Sumerian god." Yeah, I knew it was an occult reference, but it just sounds so fucking hilarious. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yep. My sister in law's uh, grandkids call her Nana. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, TJ, favorite least favorite. Uh, um. So my. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for uh, you know, for objectivity's sake, I I tried to pick some <laughs> stuff. Um, so I liked I like Nuclear Girl. Um, it reminds me of uh, like a deep cut from the Logan's Run movie soundtrack, or maybe uh, Beastmaster, uh, the keyboard stuff. You know, um, it's got that kind of vibe going on. So you know, and I like both those movies a lot. So I thought Beastmaster, cool. hell yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, and then the 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 Summerlands has kind of got a nice Legend of Zelda pan flute thing happening, so that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I, and also with the Nuclear Girl, is that maybe is that like is that like code for like chlamydia or, or venereal disease? Maybe 
Maybe. I don't, you know, um, you know, <laughs> something, uh, you know, I just, you know, in- inquiring minds want to know. I just, you know, because what the hell does that even mean, really? Um, you know, and then my least favorite song was the uh, Unholy Pagan Fire. I had just kind of the the tedious, you know, s- slow down motorhead riff at the beginning and just kind of whatever, just kind of whatever. I think um, the the werewolf semen and blood is probably the, I think it's the most redeeming song on the record. I think it's the one that's kind of the most kind of well put together overall, in my opinion, um, for the record, um, you know, kind of takes the most traditional track from front to back um yeah it's, it's very but, like metal you know what i mean yeah i mean it just it just kind of it just kind of is kind of the the most kind of normal kind of whatever thing going on in there um beyond that yeah i mean that's that's kind of it really um yeah Did any of these songs make your playlist oh no no <laughs> no not at all <laughs> no all right kellen no behera to be seen nope. no no <laughs> We so, got two in the door with Lost Horizon, though, so that's a win. <laughs> that's a win. Um, I guess we'll we'll do the least favorites uh, to begin with. So the uh, Gate of Nana's Nuclear Girl transition is the is the lull for me, um, <laughs> I, just because I listen to the uh, Gate of Nana and it's like, what is happening vocally here? I guess I'm just so confused. <laughs> it sounds like he's almost trying to sing. Like, like it's, there's like a clean vocal. Anyway, that, that I just was completely distracted by that. And it goes into the instrumental, which is like the one thing I don't need this record to be, in my opinion, is slower. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I, yeah I, that, that part is uh, probably challenging. So the parts that I do enjoy, um, Solomon's Gate, um, Sadomatic Rites, and Werewolf Semen and Blood. I agree with all the points that were made. I also would say that like, helped to write the lyrical content for the next three decades for the genre. It's like, here are the things oh, yeah. you're allowed oh, yeah. to talk about. Yeah. Where will the yeah. end blood? You know, Only thing is missing is a vampire. Done. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Your, your, your songwriting is finished. You're welcome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just, those those three tracks are some of the more metal ones. And um, I, I think helped sort of ground this record in terms of like, okay, this is, what it helped spawn for me and why all the quirkiness that is charming is also something that, you know, I can find like elements that help sort of define where this genre would go over the next, you know, 30 years. So. Right on. Well, for me, I mean, Gates of Nana is my favorite. I can't wait for the song to get there. Every time I listen to this record, (laughs) it just, it just sizes up weird and quirky and it's, it piles on the charm and that whole computerized Nana thing. I just, I just, it makes me chuckle every time I hear it and memories um, of grandma, memories of grandma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it just, it sizes up the weirdness of this record. That is like the, the focal point of weirdness on this record is that song. Um, my other favorite is uh, Salmon's gate. I really love the layered over way too loud in the mix vocals. Just the, the hissing whispers and the farting grunts and shit. It's just, <laughs> it's hilarious, man. It's hilarious. And it's cool how oh, it's yeah. all layered. Um, least favorite for me is Unholy Pagan Fire. It was, I think the whole album is very lethargic, but that song even more so before it kicks into the speed, the, the riff is just too simple. I mean, which is yeah. saying a lot because it, the whole damn album is, I mean, I could pick it up a guitar and play every single riff in, a minute seriously it's not a hard album to play or figure out but that song in particular they they piled they even stripped more stuff away and in spite of the speed it's still a very boring song so for me unholy pagan fire was the least my least favorite but um let's wrap it up with some judgment final thoughts we'll start with kellen on this one absolute classic no other record like it out there it, essential listening for the genre. True. It's true. So I know the record like it. Yeah. And I remember like, I, I was actually briefly interested um, to go back and back before I was whatever doing this YouTube thing, I was watching everyone. There was like a thread of like 20 cold stone black metal records. And like, there was a bunch of people who contributed to it. I think this record showed up almost on everyone's list. Um, it was 
I mean, it, it's that it's it really important listening. Um, so just not only like on a historical perspective, but I think uh, it, it still remains over the years. Like it is still as as odd as it was back then, and uh, and a very unique addition to the genre. So um, if you, if you're tuning in and you have not heard this record for whatever reason, like absolutely there's your homework go get schooled on this and drawing down the moon um but if you have like i still think it's probably an, an essential one to at least have experience at some point in time go back and revisit it and and you know i think there's still probably something to enjoy and and uh for people who have heard it like you know marty and Jen, they, they can still go back to it and get something unique from it oh yeah so. And I, and I put a link in the description to uh, Nuclear War Now. Yosuke uh, just uh, reissued this. Did an amazing job. I mean, typical record geek nerdery. I mean, booklet, gatefold, repurchase the uh, the artwork from NASA and actually have a super crystal clear picture of it on the cover. Um, go check it out. And also, if you... Nuclear War Now, they've got uh, a very extensive band camp. You can go listen to all the stuff for free. So go check it out for sure. Um, Jim, did we do your final thoughts? Did we get your judgment? No. Not yet. Okay, no. right on. Um, well, you know, obviously my pick, so no surprise. You know, I, I really love this record. It's it's so different. I'm super stoked to finally have it on vinyl. I, I got the, the Nuclear War Now release um, um, because I was, you know, waiting to get it on vinyl and you, and you can't find this on vinyl for you know not a lot of, it's, it's very expensive you know but now it's reasonable and and yeah it's it's awesome i highly recommend it if you if you like this record if you find out after listening to it that you like it i definitely recommend it the booklet and you know the, you know the, the background you know it's nice nuclear warning always does the thing is it like the the, the stoughton like he the one the front is really rough and the inside smooth it's yeah, like a, a yeah. chipboard or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. It, he really he, a high attention to detail on this record. Yeah, I mean, he but, actually said this is like you know his most important release of the year. You know, um, that and and some other band that from Czechoslovakia. Imprecation, like, probably imprecation. That was some some really old thing like Dye oh die like yeah D A I yeah 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 so, yeah. yeah that's it. But um, but also uh, also Marty, he's putting uh, Hades again shall be. He's doing reissue on that. I thing. saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm that's excited about suck. that. Yep, I'm definitely gonna buy that too. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta buy that. I gotta buy both of them. Exactly. But but yeah. Um. So yeah. Final thoughts. You know, I echo Kellen 100. Uh, percent If you haven't checked this out, please do. If you have and you dismissed it, you know, you know, give it another go. You know, even it, even you know. It's moments of unintended hilarity. Just add to the character of this album. Add to the weirdness of it. Um, you know, you know, it it can be dark and moody one minute and take you out of it with just this complete bizarreness. But you know, that's that that really is kind of what this album is. It's just hard to define. And and you know, but something that can be like, you know, just true, true dark metal, but you know, still defy categorization. I mean, you know, that that that's not going to be you know something. Um, that sits on your shelf, you know, you know, without being warranted to do so. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I you know, definitely for me, this is an A and, you know, I'm, I've never stopped listening to it since I heard it and I'm not gonna, this is a great record. TJ. Yeah, absolute classic. Uh, <laughs> no record like it. <laughs> no, no record sounds like it. Uh, <laughs> we haven't listened to it. You listen to it. I don't know. Man, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I, man, I you know I I hate to be the odd man out in this one, and uh, I appreciate all the all the the, the room I'm given, the, you know, to be uh, to be object objectionable to this uh, what really is a classic record. Um, I know what it is. I know I know where it stands. Um, I am not a fan. I don't care for it. I never have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all knew. You did. You got me. You got me. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, what can I say, man? I mean, th this record lives where it lives um, in, in, in the realm of uh, classic records for, for, you know, setting setting standards and, and, and setting the, the other bands on the path and and uh, I'm never going to let it down. Listen, 
<laughs> I, I'm gonna, you know what? That's gonna. I'm, we're gonna. We're just gonna listen to that again for next week. What do you think? About <laughs> I won't be able to make it next week. Alan will take the reins on that. Show. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever. I like that record. I can't help it. Um, this is true, you know. Andre. Uh, band practice. I hear it every week. <laughs> this album sucks. Oh my god, you guys are dumb. This sucks. <laughs> I felt it. And honestly, Jim pulled that record out and I felt intentional. It's like he's doing it to me on purpose, isn't he? Right? It's like, what, what, <laughs> Lost, Horizon, <laughs> Lost Horizon to the Barrett. What is happening? <laughs> it's like, what did I ever do to you, bro? Um, but no, nah, man. You know, again, I'm trying to be, you know, I've been, you know, I've been listening to metal for a long, long time. And, you know, I know, I know what this band is and, and where they stand. And I, uh, you know, I, I can't. I can't crap on that kind of legacy for what it is. I'm not into it. You know, I'm just not, you know, I, I can't really letter grade this or, you know, to, I mean, I get, I mean, to be perfectly honest, if I had to, you know, you know, gun to my head, letter grade this record for what it is and, and what they did and who they, you know, what it became and what, you know, it, it would have to be something like a B or something. Because, uh, yeah, I, okay, I would, Kellen, welcome to Kellen's yeah, world. You and I know, Kellen, right? You guys, yeah, I'm, not I'm not alone in this world. <laughs> this is this is my voivod. <laughs> you know, oh my you God, know, everything about everything about this. Sucks. These guys are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to be fair, man. I am trying to be fair. You know, I, you know, I mean, it's like if I, like I said, gun to my head. I mean, you want you want my honest, unbridled opinion. This fuck this record. You know, but that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, honestly, but, um, you know, again, I'm trying to be fair to these guys. I don't, I don't want to shit all over it and just for no reason at all. You know, my, my opinion's notwithstanding. It's just, it is what it is. So, um, I have to admit it, it took me a hell. It took me all, you know, all the week to try to, I mean, I put it on every time we do a pick, I put it in and I'd heard, you know, Jim pulled this out. I was like, shit. And then before bed, I put it on the phone and was like, God, it's still fucking awful. And, and I just turned it off. And I tried a couple different times to get going on it. I just couldn't. I couldn't listen to it. And I finally, I listened to it three, I listened to it three times today. Uh, you know, uh, and, and three, you know, twice. Three three. whole times. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that was brutal, man. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, man, you know, and again, we come here to have a good time and talk about stuff. My opinions are, you know, everybody's, everybody's got elbows. They got opinions and they got assholes. It's all, you know, whatever it does. Absolutely. It is what it is. And, and hey, I, man, the show wouldn't be the same without you, <laughs> without your hate. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> we need, we need the hate. Yeah. My hate. We all, and all we all this lived through the, we all lived through the fate tooth thing where we all loved it. And it was kind of gross. <laughs> so it's well, it nice to have dissenting opinions. <laughs> it happens, you know, it, you know, it, like to pick winners, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did. I did. Yep. So anyway, yeah, that's that's my uh, final thoughts on D. Herrett's, uh classic release, nineteen ninety three, drawing down the moon. Right on. And to be honest, <laughs> I, I get where TJ's coming from because this this band, it's amazing. It seems like the underground impact this album has kind of it's it comes out of nowhere and the for a band that has not been prolific at all and really only did I mean this album and then a couple electronic <laughs> records that are not that great they're just not they're not very good for even for ambient dark ambient music it's not very good it's just it, they're just not it wasn't until this record this record on the other hand rules i love this record i think rules. i think the songwriting on this it's it still remains simplistic but it's super catchy and they actually string songs together that make sense um great production good ferocious vocals yeah man this is a good record and you know it's too bad this could have been the follow-up to drawing down the moon it would have made sense it just would have Am I wrong? But I think the the guys from Kraft helped him on this. I don't know for sure if that's true, or not. but um, I, that could be wrong. So don't quote me on that. But drawing down the moon, I liked it a lot more going into this week than I ended up. I I, I don't think it from a musical standpoint, 
it doesn't hold up. I think the legend of it kind of uh, has blinded people on what this album really is. Um, it's good. I like it on the charm fact. I'm going to give this a solid seven. It's a solid seven. Uh, the impact it's had is probably more along a nine. I think it's fun. I like the quirkiness of it. I prefer the quirky songs on the album. Um, but yeah, that's it. I, I, it is funny. I was looking at the, the metal, the, the metal archive. Some, there are a lot of reviews on this and it's very back and forth. It's very polarizing. There's people that love it hundred percent classic. And there's people like they, they start off the, you know, you put a title on your review. I wish I liked this more than I did. You know, mm. it's just it, people either love it or they hate it. And I'm kind of in the middle. I think, I think it had its place. I think it had an impact. I think it's fun. It's quirky, but I don't think fun and quirky is what the intention was behind it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't think that was the intention going into it, but it is what it is. And that's where we're at. But one thing we do have to get, uh, uh, what is uh, TJ going to pick for us next week? Uh, so I normally I'm real ready for this and I was really struggling this week, trying to decide what kind of retaliation I needed to take on you guys for this. <laughs> piece of shit. And, you know, <laughs> And I've been, I have just been all over the place uh, trying to figure out, you know, will it have saxophones and bongos or won't it? I don't know. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm go back and forth, you know. And I wish John Hyde so. says it's your time. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I've, uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll try this one here the 57 Haunts of Halloween sound effects CD. I yeah. think this one alone will probably keep us all talking for a long time, <laughs> in all seriousness. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted, but um, we need definitely, I, I, you know, rather than go into something that's black metal or, you know, I want to um, move into something a little different. And I, I think I'm settling on this. And so um, I think this is what the second record by a Massachusetts band called Elder. Uh, Alan said Johnny yeah. Portal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look for my solo work. It's coming. Um, so, elder, um, yeah, elder. Uh, 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 dead root stirring. Dead root um, stirring. Yep. Uh, it, they are a, um, you know, more akin to, to things like, uh, you know, it's more of a um, rock, stoner rock kind of whatever heavy um jammy kind of stuff um gonna go in a completely different direction a little bit so um it's it's uh yeah so we'll, we'll go with that all right sweet okay not heard it elder dead root stirring i put it in the chat everybody can check that out um that's it before we completely wrap i just want to remind people we've started doing reviews here on heavy metallurgy a lot of you folks aren't checking them out. Go check them out. They're fun. They're cool. We got myself doing them. We've got Kellen doing them. Brain Smasher will be debuting one maybe this week, weekend. Kellen's will be up next uh, this coming Monday. Rick has done one from the Dreadful Minutes. Bringing people in. And it's a lot of fun doing them. Also, we've noticed that the, there's anywhere from 20 to 35% of you that don't subscribe. Or watching but you're not subscribing it would help us out if you subscribe please do so we're trying to get to five thousand, so we will make alan listen to uh halloween's chameleon in its entirety <laughs> <laughs> while you all watch <laughs> that is the, that is your gift for five thousand, and um that's it that's all i can think of is you guys have anything to add before we go anybody have anything they want to promote kellen you have anything coming up on the channel uh, I, nothing immediate. I may get Corinne up here with me soon enough, but outside of that, uh, I don't have anything scheduled. Right on. Jim, any IWAS things coming down the route? Mm, no. I, I, um, the Verlust guy, uh, I put out his last cassette. He's coming out with his own self released one here. I'll be stocking that soon. So I'll let you guys know when that hits. And I got to get you to send him some more. He's ran out of his own copies, so okay, we'll, we'll talk about that. But yeah, but yeah, that's that's all I got. So yeah, hey, by the way, if anybody knows of uh, a good black metal or death metal or just good metal or whatever, 
you know, band that is looking for a cassette release that's, you know, send them my way. You know, uh, iowasrecordings.com, you know, my contact form is on there. Link is in the you know, description. I, yep. I'm, look, I'm looking for to put out another cassette. I don't do releases often because it's just a side thing for me. But if I like something and they need a little attention, I'll put out their cassette. I'll put them in decibel. We'll go from there, you know. So, you hope. TJ, any Glorious Dead news? Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, there is, Marty. I just yeah. found out that the record was sent to the to the uh, processing plant uh, just this past weekend. Um, and there will be uh, a video and three singles uh, soon to be released um, to the general public for your uh, approval or disapproval soon. I haven't talked to the label guy yet about exactly when that's going to happen. We need to I figure that gonna, out. I was going to text him earlier, and then I was... I was too busy and you know, whatever. Listening you to know, Barry. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, tr trying not, finding every excuse not to listen to it, actually. But um, so, yeah, so that we got that going on. So, uh, you know, when when will the record actually be physically available? I don't know. We don't know that yet. We don't yeah, know that yet. Yeah. And I'm still trying to figure out PR situation if we're going to use a PR plant. But, um, yeah, yep, that's coming. We've got a show in Lansing, Michigan at the Oigs Fest on April 1st. April Fool's Day, and then uh, May 20-something or other. We'll be 20. In May 20th. 20. May 20th, we'll be yeah. in Louisville, Kentucky with uh, Panopticon, and I can't remember the name of the other band. Uh, so something something well. I'm sorry, oh, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, poison? But, um, no, not Poison. No, 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 no. no. That's, a, that's no. a completely different situation. Yeah. Um, yeah um, what an interesting lineup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the other band. Sorry, folks. Yeah, uh, I apologize. But yeah, uh, headliners, music venue, uh, yep. uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. May so twenty. May twenty. Yeah. Uh, Direct. I, I, I think I'm gonna. I think Jess is gonna fly with me up there, guys. So cool. Right right on. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, cool. Well, and uh, also uh, Simon uh, so eloquently stated. Uh, he just we just posted his review for Curvna's for thine is the kingdom of flesh on Monday. Go check it out. Less than 200 people have watched it. The band, the band even watched it and liked it. So go check it out, people. It's a great record. But anyway, enough, enough plying our wares. Everybody, we'll see you Friday. Uh, Jimmy from Future Ruins will be on. We'll be talking about metal that is escapism, metal albums that take you to another world type of stuff. So it'll be a good show. Um, please join us and thank you everybody for watching tonight. We had over 70 people tonight, which is really good for Wednesday night album club. So cheers. We'll be back next week with elder and, uh, y'all have a good night. Take care.